God. Well, welcome to From Inside Ministry. My name is Mr. Hugh Braxton. Welcome to Wednesday Night Worship. We come to feed you the Word of God tonight. It is um, 224, 2024, and this is the year that FIO Ministry from Inside Out Ministry has decided to let our vision be this year that we want you, we must make up our minds this year in whom we want to please. God of the world, God of the world. First John, who remember First John two fifteen says, you mean it says what? Love not the world, nor the things in the world. In other words, it says don't love those things more than you love God. Anything. Now that's going to be tested, and God has a way of absolutely testing that. Because if you love things more than God, one day He's going to test you on it. And the only person you get to see is usually us sometimes, and then we realize, oh my God, you know. Me and my wife had to let some jobs go that we was just kicking it. Got it going on. But God would test that. He was like, will you let it go? There were some opportunities there where I could have got promoted, but it would affect my family. God says, what you going to do? What's your priorities? My family, I told my wife when I married, I said, you will always be number one after God. My daughter's next. I keep that order, even as a minister. A lot of ministers don't. They forget. They'll say they do, but they don't. The Bible tells a man, he says, husband, love your wife. I'm talking about love like this is what Valentine's Day. Husband, love your wife. He tells the wife to respect her husband, right? But he tells the husband to love the wife. And then if he comes, he says later on, and he tells the people who pick leases. Now, if he's loving his wife and his family's rule well, he says, put him in leadership. Give him a little more responsibility. Then later on, he said, oh, I think I'm called to start speaking. He said, cool, I got another commandment for you. He said, now, now feed my sheep. That's what I'm doing tonight, I'm feeding my sheep. Well, what happens, I noticed, and I told my wife, I said, baby, I noticed something. They switch roles. They wind up loving the church, and they feeding their wife. They'll say, I bought her a new car. Look at how she stays in. They, they are feeding her. But they love what they're doing more than they love their wife. That's out of order. <laughs> and this is why you see a lot of uh, pastors wind up getting divorced. I'm saying that for the world to understand. How could that be? They're supposed to be the ones who know. But I'm telling you how. They got away from a part of the word that God says. Now, when I tell you to do all of the word, you will never fail. You will never fail. There is no failure in God. You ever heard that before? They have you seen Christians fail? Mm -hmm. But the key words, there is no failure in God. Now, where is God at? He is located in this thing called the Emmanuel. All right? In his word. This is his will. And this is his way. This is his order. As long as you stay in his will, his way, his order, you will never fail. But when you see things fail, trust me, you have got off the word. This is why I put so much emphasis on the word. You will fail as soon as you get off the word. So therefore, God had put a, a he says, a no fail system for you in that manual. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's get into the word tonight. So yeah, love not the world and other things. And God says, love God. He says, love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. You have to meditate on that scripture. And all your being. You know, there's nothing comes before your God. Nothing. And you're going to have to constantly remind them because Satan's going to come and start snatching little by little and taking up your time before you know you have no time for God. I ain't got time to read. I ain't got time to do that. And you know what? You're too busy fooling around with all the blessings God gave you for when you used to have a relationship. Mm -hmm. distracted. God says, come back to your first love. See, when you first start this thing, you'd be like, oh, I just love the Lord. I just don't know. I just want, I just want to go. I just want to read my word. Like, and then all of a sudden, God starts blessing you, blessing you, blessing you. And you start spending time with all those blessings. And I start spending more time with my wife, which I should, but not in response to that stay in the word because that's, that would make her attractive in the first place. I was a man of God, and I need to stay a strong man of God. And all the better take the hits and give her directions and correct us and, and run the family. And if I don't stay in that, I'm going to lose the light in her eyes. And we wouldn't know it. we be caught up in just feeling comfortable. But there's always a test. Satan, God says Satan, is, he says, I'm not scared. He says, I created Satan. 
Don't never let people put God and Satan hand side by side. There is no contest mm -hmm. at all. You might take one of God's angels, in which most of them are take him out anyway. They already did before, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You know, you start with the archangels, you can forget it. You see one archangel who slew what is it, one hundred and forty-six thousand soldiers? One angel. <laughs> like wow, one so. So, so, and that's let us know when it comes to the spirit realm, without God, we cannot, without us. So we cannot be going in the spirit realm without God. Our life is a super, super means above, natural, naturally where we are now, we go above. When we go above for the super life, we're going to have the encounter with God. All right? So when we fail, because this is in Ephesians, when he said you put on the whole arm of God, He's telling you that in prayer. He says, now when you pray, you have the capability to actually generate and go into the spirit realm. He says, no, I'm not going there unless you got the whole armor on. You go up in the spirit realm, all of a sudden, Satan got his demons telling you, look at you, call yourself a Christian. Look what you did last night. What you did with yesterday. The hymn of salvation is supposed to be on you. He can never do that. Boy, what you talking about? I just went to the cross for that. Don't even try me like you got your hymn of salvation. And then he'll tell you some word. He'll take the word called wickedness. He'll take some word and twist it. And so you know the word says blah, 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 blah. Like he did Jesus when he tried to test Jesus. He says, he says, jump off off the cliff. Don't the word say that the angels will keep you from dashing your feet? See, he's going to do you like that. He's going to use the word. And if you ain't going to yourself with the belt of truth, <laughs> you're going to get deceived. Amen. Somebody needs to hear that tonight. Praise God. You, you, you got to be on your game, man. We got to stay sharp. Sharper than we ever were. You got to be God says, you know, make sure you study to show yourself approved unto God. Keep studying. Even the stuff that you already know. I go over and over and over the stuff. Same scriptures. Because it's going to sharpen you. You need to be quick with the word because Satan's going to come and tempt you. So when you get ready to pray, he says, you know, and pray in the Holy Ghost always. That was the end of that armor. The arm, you know, what we talked about how the armor was. So it's basically like Iron Man. Y'all seen Iron Man from the Avengers, right? He got the armor suit on, but it takes power and lots of power. So he says at the end of putting the whole full armor of God on, he says, and finally, praying in the spirit, what? Always. You know, he says, now energize that Iron Man suit. <laughs> Put some power on it now. It's not only you got your whole armor on, but it's full of power. Power, every piece of it has power. Anyone he comes at, he's going to get touched or electrocuted or something, right? <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Because we learned that speaking sound, one of the benefits of speaking sound is where it energizes you. It charges you, that where we use charge your cells. So you start praying in the Holy Spirit, especially when you're about to go to meetings and you don't have the answer. You go and sit, I'll be right back, take five minutes, and you go and pray. Say, so God, I don't know what to do. I'm going to say, should I make the decision? Should I not? You go pray in the Holy Ghost. And then I'm telling you, that's when you get your answers. You know, empty yourself out. Now, you really go to God, not with your answers. You're like, God, I don't have a clue. That's what you need to have, an empty slate. He don't need you bringing all that other stuff in the way. You go to because now you're yielding. God, I don't have a clue. If you don't come through, I'm going to fall. I mean, I did that so much on my job. I was in a situation like, God, if you don't come through, man, not only am I going to look silly, <laughs> I ain't going to be able to do this. And he always came through. I'm telling you. But it was, don't get me wrong, so I get you all this feeling. Was you nervous? Yes. Was you scared? Yes. Were you kind of thinking, oh, I'm going to come through. I'm going to come through. Did I have some of that kind of stuff in my head? Absolutely. But, at, well, but guess what I did do that was correct? I acknowledged him. In all your ways. I didn't just sit there in silence and suffering like, I don't know what to do. Man, I got to, you know. You know, I, no, I acknowledged him. I said, God. And I acknowledged him the right way. Not in a begging, oh my God, if you're going to fall up. No, no, God. God, you said, I started reminding, he said, put me in remembrance of my word. He said, God, you said, if any man like wisdom, let I ask you. God, I'm actually, I don't know what to do. I need, I need direction on this. Mm -hmm. You know. And just start doing it. You start doing the small stuff because later on you might need something bigger. You will in your life. But you have to practice with the small stuff. Amen. Somebody need that. It's not in my message. Praise God. Look at this scripture. You know, I love the scripture. Matthew 6.33 says this. Read it. You can start reading. Go ahead and warm up. Go ahead and warm up. You ready? Yep. 
Get you some. <laughs> Matthew, Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you there you go back to that word seek thank you seek first prioritize that's why I was talking about in that first thing we said you must make him a priority though yes. this is the thing mm -hmm. and since when you make him a priority guess what he's he gonna just add it to you he's just gonna add it I want God to just add to me. Like, what did you do? Nothing. God just gave it to me. Why? Because I, I saw him first. Not second. Not third. I saw him first. Praise God. Praise God. We okay with that? We good? We good? We good? Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Praise God. Yes. All right. The year, this is the year of appropriating the word of God. And this word is very important to me. Uh, I actually took it a little bit further now. To appropriate the word of God. To appropriate. Faith appropriates God's grace in our lives. By God's grace, he has given us everything. Later on, we have learned. Uh, I forget this out. This is called seize. Y'all can't see that, so I'll read it for you. Seize. Seize means to take hold suddenly and forcefully. To seize me to take hold suddenly and forcefully. Next word is take. Reach for and hold. Reach for and hold. This is what we're supposed to do when God says this word take. Y'all yeah, should know this word take because I taught you this one. When we say the word receive. See means to what? To take. All right. You receive, so I, I believe it, I receive. You say you mean you taking it. Alright? Now watch this. Receive. So when you go back to go back, go back and take. We, the reason why God put re in front of every redemptive word and project in the Bible. Uh, redemption. Receive. Give me another reword. Yes. Repent. Give me another reword. Renew. Renew, renew your mind with the word of God. Revive. Bold. Say restore. Look at it. All these rewords. And all throughout the Bible. All you guys read words, but God says, look here, I have brought you back to the Garden of Eden when Jesus Christ came to the cross. So I want you to go back and do the reset and everything that Adam had in the garden, Jesus Christ has brought back and given to you guys now. That's why they all reads. He says you're going to receive, meaning you once owned it before, but now you got to go back and take it, which you once owned before. All right. Because Adam lost it when, when he disobeyed God. Okay, so now God says, I want you to go back and take it now. Y'all had set you up in the right position where Jesus Christ came and paid for everything, uh, gave you a brand new born again spirit. Uh, uh, I have conquered. He, he went to a hell, death, hell, and the grave and conquered everything, put Satan to an open shame, and he snatched the keys and says, now Satan will have the keys to the open gates no more. That's why he says the gates of hell will not prevail against you. Why? Because I snatched those keys when I went down to hell and put Satan to an open shame. The problem is we don't know that. We don't know that we're supposed to go back now. He says, now you're back in heaven. You're back in the garden. You're back in my presence. So now go back to Genesis, like I said, and take dominion. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. So also you claim, you got to claim it. I mean, profession, declaration, uh, lay hold on, lay hold, catch, or gain possession, and possess means to have as it belong to one, or own it. You got to own it. God wants you owning things. Why? The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof. Watch this. And everything in it, watch this, and everyone. <laughs> All right? So here's God. He's not flexing. He says, um, I'm your father. You're my children. Every time you open your eyes up and you wake up in the morning, you see the sun, moon, earth. Okay? Earth is the Lord. Everything in it. When you see all these fancy cars, fancy houses, fancy buildings, that is your daddy's stuff. My inheritance. It's part of your inheritance. There you go. Preach, woman. <laughs> that is part of our inheritance. You know? As a citizen, you have rights. And you have rights to go get your stuff. That's why he gave you all these rewords. He says, retake, receive. You know, he wants you to go back and get your stuff. The problem is, is like, is anything too hard for God? We're like, no. For with man, this is what? Awesome. For with God. 
So that's why Jesus comes and says, I'm the vine, you are the branches outside of me. But with me, you can do all things. So now he wants you to go and do it because he knows when you go outside and wake up in the morning, you're intimidated. You see all these people got all this stuff, these big houses. Oh, they got a big man. And God, and God, and I just remind me, that's my daddy's stuff. And God says, and if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you, you will say and it will obey. You're going to say and it will obey. You're going to say and it, whatever you're saying it about or talking to, it's going to obey you. All right. You're saying, oh, come on now. I said some things before I've never seen it. You're correct. I am telling you there's a formula. I just told you the right, correct formula. Now, here's the problem. Your spirit is not trained. And thank God it's not, because think about what you're saying. Because <laughs> if your spirit, your heart, and your spirit starts talking what you said, and you want to come and, man, my knee is killing me. See what you're saying? Remember, God says, if you, if you say to it, it shall owe. So your knee just kills you. Now you did. You did. <laughs> All right? See, this is why God, this is why God, it didn't happen that way. So I didn't tell you no lie. I'm telling you the truth. It's all in the Bible. But your spirit, man, is not trained. This is why I start you off on the layer. Like, first you find what the spirit is. When God says you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. All right? So your spirit has a heart. So now you're living from your spirit, man. You're living from the heart. He says, uh, he says what? In the abundance of the heart, the, heart, the mouth speaks. And he also says, um, as a man thinking in his so what if I'm thinking, you know, because I used to think, when I used to read that scripture, oh, I'm a millionaire, you know. But I wasn't thinking that in my heart. I said, hold it in my head. I got plenty of that in my head. I'm a millionaire. Okay, I'm a millionaire. I'm going to wake up in the morning. I'm going to be a millionaire. Because God says, you know, as a man thinking in his heart, so is he. I was still thinking from mind and blood pump. Because <laughs> it's always going to happen. But when you do, see, this is what Jesus did. When Jesus started telling these guys that, he was telling them to know where they're operating. They operate from their spirit, man. So when you see these guys, I don't know why we're talking about this, but God's good. <laughs> when, when you see um, Peter, when they come out of the upper room, and the first miracle do is at a religious church, and this beggar sitting by the open door, the gate called beautiful, whatever, and he's sitting there, all right, and he says this. He goes, uh, he says, silver and gold I don't have. But what I do have, I give to you. And then he grabs the man and says, get up and walk. Now, you know when I thought about religion, if you did that today, you are kicked out of church. Who do you think you are? <laughs> you know, they don't believe in that whatsoever. It's impossible. Why? Because their mind is not renewed to the spirit man. They don't believe that at all. And every scripture is going to say, let, man, let, let God be true and what? Everything. It's always going to condemn them. They have to bypass every scripture that's going to say. It's only going to agree about what I just told you. Because that's the whole plan of God. See, they, Christianity came with their own religion. Their own religion is this, well, we're not going to talk about no, none of the stuff Jesus talked about, the kingdom of God and how powerful you are, what you're going to do, the things I do, you're going to do great. We're not going to preach that. But we're going to talk about what he did. What he did, he died that one day we might go to heaven. And that's what Christianity is, is around. Yeah. You know, so therefore, you know, and, if, and then they get, they, so they took, they made my father and your father look bad by saying, and he's sorry. He's so sorry that ain't nothing we can do. So it made him like he's a mean old, that he, I'm a mean old lion, like it said, lion. <laughs> he's mean. You know why? Because he just told you. The earth is the Lord, the fourth is the earth, and everything in it. There's healing in my way, and the healing in the man. He's telling you all the stuff he got, and here's the Christianity going to tell you, yeah, but he might not give it to you. <laughs> he, he, it's up to you if he's going to give it to you or not. And I mean, I told you, the first thing that got me out of my, my heavenly father challenged me, he said, do you think your father is better than me? And I, I like, and I started thinking, like, oh, is it rhetorical? I said, yeah. He put me in the spot because I'm kind of thinking from when I've been taught, he'll be better than you because if he owned all this, I'm going to have some of this. If he had healing, I ain't going to never get sick. You know, and so I'm like, so I'm like, no, I think he, you know. And he said, and God already know your thoughts are far off. He knew what I was thinking. You know, so he corrected me and showed me. He said, see, you're right to think that way. He said, not about me, but you are right. You should be thinking that I shall supply 
all your needs according to my richness and power and glory. You are right to think that way, you. I'm like, wow. I'm like, man, they don't, they don't, they don't like that kind of talk. You know, and that's the same way, the same things. He said, look at my son. And then he told me, go study nothing but Jesus. I studied Jesus for two years. My wife could be with me. She's with me. That's the only thing I studied. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, for two years. I walked away with this thing called the kingdom of God. A whole new world up. And I'm like, wow. And of course, when I talk to other believers, you know what the kingdom of God, you know the kingdom of God? Yeah, man. The, the kingdom of God is, is, is in you. And that's it, period. <laughs> Couldn't take it no further. They didn't know what it was. They didn't know that you were another speaking spirit, that, that God has made you in his image, that you're his child and he's your God. And he originally made this earth for you, for you can operate the same way he operated in heaven. He's telling you to bring that kingdom come that will be done on earth just like it is in heaven. He's telling you, I want you to be like me. Then we read that scripture last week. Be ye imitators like your dear father. They, they didn't teach you none of that. We sit here begging God like he's a bad God. Then you have to go, go in your brain. That's why our spirit's not trained. Now it goes like, he's a good, good father. And you think, you know, he's not. Because <laughs> in your ass, you're like, yeah, yeah, you know. And then you don't have no confidence in this no more. Because you have tried it. I, I, I ask. You know, I ain't get anything. I said something. Didn't see anything. Because he, God says you ask, but you ask and miss. He already know what's going on. Mm -hmm. That's why I told you earlier. I set you up for it. If you ever fail, it's because you're not doing it right. It's supposed to work. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I taught you that last year, remember? It's supposed to work. I mean, when Lexus makes a car and their car breaks down, they're going to they're gonna be like, I can't figure it out. You know what? It's supposed to work. When Ford makes a car and truck and it's broken, it's like, we're trying this. It's perplexing. Why? It's supposed to work. When I got to religion, that's the only place that let me be broken. Broke, That's busted, and disgusted, and say, praise me. <laughs> praise me. Hallelujah anyway. I'm like, what? And God God and Jesus sitting there down on the right hand because they're like, hey, I, I set everything in place. And they're getting no glory for us being broke, busted, or disgusted with our lives. None of this stuff match. If you ever just sit down and read with you, it, every time something happens, God must be teaching you a lesson. Wait a minute. Somebody died. Somebody got sick. Somebody lost. He's not teaching a lesson. Let's read. Definition. Devil come to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus, I came that you might have life and more abundantly. Totally opposite. Totally opposite. So religion, religion, I can hear a mile away. When you you supposed to be when you say it's a more it's not about religion it's about a relationship it wound up being a relationship with religion because <laughs> a relationship you're supposed to start thinking like let's think this out you got a mom and dad they you never when you was a kid you woke up in the morning you ain't worried about anything well go back to your help before he says I'm better than that you have been evil know how to give good gifts to your kids how much more your father in heaven is better than that. All right. So now you start thinking like, okay, I'm a full grown man, and here God, God says, I'm, I'm your father. You my father. Well, my natural father. I, I ain't got to worry about now. I went to sleep, woke up in the morning, and it was good. You know. You say I'm his child. Really, as a child, I remember waking up, man. I don't know how mom and dad are gonna pay them bills. I don't know. <laughs> that was not on my mind. That's why God says when you come to operate in my new system called the kingdom of God, you must become like a child you must become like a child see a child would challenge you he would ask questions we don't do that anymore we just said something like that's just the way life it is because you're going through the experience of working out on your own doing your own thing in your own energy you know with your own abilities and as an adult we have learned that's just life this will make the, the light in your eye go out when you start living, you, you see the kids and kids be not the boss them. I mean, the whole world can fall apart. You give them a piece of food, they just dance. <laughs> Nothing about it. God says, that's what I want you. When he sent me down and told me that, that's what it means to enter into my rest. When you enter into his rest, that you come and boy like a kid. You're like, I don't know. 
you know, you know, and, 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 and people be bringing up stuff. You're like, well, that my uh, that look like a die for a job for El Shana, <laughs> which is my dad. <laughs> you know, you know, I'm sorry. Hey, he, you know, you got to do this and do this and like, oh, the tires, these new some tires, air condition broke. Like that look like a die job for El Shana, which happened to be my father. You know, the self-sufficient one, <laughs> the other one who provides according to his riches. He just told me he owned everything else. He got he owned the tire shop. He owns the air conditioning manufacturers. He owned the car makers. He owns it all. He owned the medical facilities. This is the way you got to start thinking. Imagine, this is how Jesus walked around like that. Everywhere he went, he's like, that's my father's. Anything he needed, they had no needs. The first tree I had to uproot, which was very hard, was that Jesus was poor. Even though I never read anything that said that Jesus was poor in the Bible. I assume because everybody, the way they talked about him, that he was poor. And they shunned you having anything like a king's kid. They shunned that. It was negative. You know, so... To be, to be spiritual is to be broke. <laughs> you know, that's what they did, right? So here you are, like, so when did Jesus get poor? I said, well, I never, it's my fault. He, he never really went back and looked at the scripture and said, let's see how poor Jesus really is. He starts off in the, as a babe in a manger, and he starts off with, you know, they, 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 uh, with magi. Look at me as a kid and say, where is that king? We got lots and lots and lots of stuff to give him. Archaeologists talk about magi. Magi are not regular kings. Magi, watch this, are king makers. <laughs> they, the, matter of fact, and they also people who can go in and pull a king right off his throne. You no longer king. That's how powerful they were. And when they had, when they traveled, they had an entourage. That's why when it took them so long to get there, he was a child. He was not a baby. The only people seeing him as a baby was Mary and Joseph and, and, and uh, the shepherds. Because they were taking care of lambs. And remember I taught you about that? How their job was to make it how they stayed with the lamb, the sacrificial lambs for the temple. So it's God, God's always going to connect that. You, your job was to take care of the sacrificial lamb. Now I'm going to let you go see the most, the one and only sacrificial lamb forever. Only God can do something like that. That's why they was on. That's why those shepherds, not this particular shepherd, not all the shepherds, those particular shepherds, they job raised sacrificial lamb for the temple to be sacrificed, and they had to take care of those lambs a certain way, because they had to be without spot or blemish. They had to be inspected, ate the best of food, and they wrapped up their little feet for they wouldn't be dashed their feet on anything or sharp rocks or anything, because they had rocks in that area. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, I'm telling you how good God is. Mm -hmm. This is not my message. <laughs> it is tonight. <laughs> I'm just trying to tell you who we are. Let's get back to Eden and live on top of the world. The world. That's who we are. You should get it. You don't be saying God's a king only at Christmas. He's a king every day. Up in heaven, he's a king. He has a kingdom. They call it the kingdom of heaven. And he came out here and says, now let my people operate on the kingdom of God up on the earth. The same way you operate uh, on there. So let's get in the word. I'm going to show you how God says we supposed to plant the heavens up on the earth. That's your whole purpose. It is time to walk in our purpose. And don't be ashamed of it. Walk in your purpose. Be bold about it. Start thinking differently. Renew your minds with the word. Like I said, when you, if you bring your mind to the word, I ain't got to worry about you. You'll be with me. Because you know everything I'm saying is in the word. Now, if, you, if your mind's not new, you're just religious. You go to church, listen to sermonettes. Hey, man, talking crazy. Yeah, like everybody's got to be good. Don't he know we're supposed to be down here suffering? There's a difference in suffering. You're supposed to be go to a test. You're not supposed to be suffering for no reason at all. You're not supposed to be broke, busted, disgusted all the time. You might have a season because you have a lack of word where you don't have revelation about how to... Uh, use God's uh, principles to get you out of the situation. This is why God wants us to go. He says, go out through the whole world. Why? And preach this good news of the kingdom of God. They preach the good news that Christ died and one day you might go to heaven. That's the cross. That's not the kingdom. The cross is not the kingdom. The cross is, is the door to the kingdom. 
Once you get in the kingdom, there's an operation that God says, use these formulas and use your faith and speak from your spirit because you're another speaking spirit, just like your father in heaven. And the things you say shall come to pass. You shall decree a thing. He's going to keep telling you what you're going to do. For some reason, we don't believe it. Because a lot of, I can tell you right why I didn't, because I was the only one and a couple of other people who I listened to was saying it. Then I go out with other Christians, you get nothing. Isn't it wonderful that one day man suffer now, one day we can go to heaven? Yeah, that's good for heaven one day, but right now on earth, you know, and God told us we're supposed to dominate the earth. Still, that plan has never changed. Let's get on. 14, happy Valentine's Day. We're moving on. We're not going to say the prayer because God gave you some extra today. Praise God. That prayer will wait next week. But right now, I'll show you this. Your mindset. Your mindset is your greatest asset. Amen to that. Amen. Your mind. God says, guard your ears. Guard your eyes. And he says this word. With all diligence. That means that's going to take some effort. He said, you better watch what you're listening to. You better watch what you're listening to. You never listen to people talking to you crazy and say it comes as an angel of light. It, it sounds good. Sounds like it's supposed to be in the Bible. You're going to trust, but verify. Sound like the word. You get these crazy people talking on the street. People are talking on TV, especially social media now. And Lord, I know somebody had a nerve to tell me, oh, I listen to AI. Uh, preached a sermon. It was such a good sermon. <laughs> I like my goodness. I like you about to have hoodwink. Anybody can tell you what the Bible say. Don't know what it means. No revelation. You know, you're supposed to live by revelation. Now look at what this thing says. It's showing you right this picture right here. This one especially. <laughs> your mind is your greatest asset, so be very careful what you put into it. Garbage. You know what happens. No filters. He's wide open smiling. No filters whatsoever. I like how they say this social media, no filters. But you, you're supposed to have a filter. You know what your filter is? Right here. Because you, he ain't going to take you out of the world. You're going to be in the world. You're going to hear something that's not of God. You're going to see something that's not of God. You're going to do. You're going to be around a lot of stuff. People doing stuff that's not of God. But you're supposed to have a filter. So you don't go around and say no filter. Oh, no, no, no. And people are always telling me, yeah. you you know uh, uh uh you don't have an open mind. Some people mind so open that their brain it fell out. You don't have I'm not open. This is a closed book. <laughs> you know what open mind here? The fences. It'd be like when it, I remember um, Oprah was on TV one time and she got the big debate. She's talked about that. Well, I'm, I'm a Christian too, but there's many ways to Christ. Yeah. And this one woman raised up like, hold up, hold up. She had her filter on that day. She had, what are you talking about? The Bible says mm -hmm. that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And there's only one way to God. You know, and Oprah's like, yeah, 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 I know that. But uh, uh, see that? And she tried to blow her off. And the woman like, no, 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 no. She was in the audience and she took it. I was like, I love it. I love it. That's what we need all people to do. The only reason evil increases is because good men are silent. Well, I didn't want to say that. This woman on TV, she, didn't she got the camera on her. Mm -hmm. But you know what? She was in the zone. She wasn't trying to get no publicity. You had attacked her father. Same way I act. Natural or spiritual. As soon as I hear you say something wrong, you know, and you know, the fact that other people listen, I'm like, oh, no, 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 that's not exactly what it said, but I, and I, and I go in the way, you know, the humble way to where maybe you don't understand that. But some of these people know, and they try to hoodwink you. You know, so they draw you in and say, I'm a Christian too, and then, then they'll give you no Bible. Pastors, sheep and wool clothing, you know, I'm a Christian too. You remember the Bible said in the last days, people going to say, I'm a Christ? Mm -hmm. well, I am the Christ. Yeah, well, that's what that meant. He said, I am the Christ. He wasn't so much just saying the Christ, because remember that name was famous. Jesus was famous. But they were saying, I'm Christ, meaning I'm a Christ too. You got a lot of fake Christians. You know, like, and God, that's why Jesus, why do you think Jesus gave you measurement? He didn't let you say, oh, and every brother that they say they're a Christian, oh, go and embrace them. No, no, no. He gave you a message. He said, well, the tree shall be known by the fruit that it's going to bear. So you don't want to get hoodwinked. I mean, even though a lot of people go by that, I mean, that's on you. I was remembering that means you got away from the world. I said, what did the word say? 
I didn't the word say, you know, it's going to be known by the fruit it bears, but you went by the name. Well, he said he was Christian, so I went in business with him. I married him. I did this. I said, what did the scripture say? Did he show any fruit? No. They, they, so you got away from the word. That's what I told you. Okay. Once you get away from the word, I say, if you fail, trust me, it's because you got away from the manual. You got manuals on everything that you bought, brand new, purchased, they give you a manual. And you can never go back to them. Your product don't work. They're going to see, did you plug it in? <laughs> did you hit the start button? <laughs> you know what? They're going to go to a certain basics. The basic things in their manual. You know, you didn't submerge it in water, did you? When it says do not, it does not operate. Do not operate near or in water, you know. And you get away from it. Well, my kid kind of knocked it in the pool. So that well, we, we see, that's the kind of stuff that happens. That's not truth. That sets you free. So watch this mindset. You must remember that your mindset is your greatest asset. My mindset was Jesus was poor. So I never pursued the things that God said I had in the Word, because I think my well, Jesus is poor, so you know, no big deal, you know. And, and God says, no, 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 Magi came, and they, they, since they named three different types of things they gave him, we think it was just three kings. It was thousands of them. That was just the three things he was getting in abundance. So let's go right now. So he was loaded as a baby, and I don't know how long it took them to spin all that. If his mom and dad was just party hard after that, <laughs> we got God's kids, so we're going to spend it all. So, you know, and you never see Jesus poor throughout that. I, they, everywhere he went, you know, he had provisions. All right. Then he walked around with a person with a money bag. I don't have one of those. Personal accountant. Telling him the money. <laughs> you know, keeping it. Poor people don't do that. They'll let you know. I only got two bits. <laughs> you don't need nobody to keep, keep track of that. <laughs> Your job is to track uh, two bits. Really? I can do that myself. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so you got yourself. I got my personal accountant walking around with me. You got some money. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know, huh? So when also he has his personal accountant. Then this one woman, she went to um, when they were sitting with, with Jesus. This woman took this most expensive spice and broke in a cane and washed Jesus' feet with her hair. And the guy says, man, that's a lot of money you just spent on Jesus. He said, leave her alone. Now, you think I was broke with two bits? She did right. But no, 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 no. Sell that for we can have a bigger conference. No. She's doing what she's supposed to do. It's expensive because he's a king. All right? And the grandpa, now that can go on and on showing you all different places where, you know, um, where he says, you know, he says, where do you dwell? He says, come and see. He had a dwelling place. And some people try to use when the rich running ruler came, when he just got ran out of town, because you see how the chosen does it. He'll send two people in the city because he said, I want to speak to the people. Go, go ahead of us and set it up. Well, you did go to some cities and like, who are you talking about? Jesus? No, he's not coming here. He ain't coming up in here, you know. And so they came back to Jesus. They won't allow us to have it. He says, no problem, because he already taught them how to do it. If they don't receive you, shake the dust, keep on moving. All right? And he's about to do that. And then a rich young ruler came up to him and says, hey, Jesus and Nazareth, oh, I worship you. I will follow you anyway. He's like, are you sure? Are you sure? We just left this city over here, and they wouldn't even receive me. You know? And so he said, he said I, you know, foxes have holes, you know, in this city. And then and bears have dens, whatever he says. And a matter of fact, he says, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Well, that can't be true because he went in the boat and then laid his head and went fast asleep. <laughs> All right, you know, he's always laying his head somewhere, sleeping. Jesus, do you not know we can't perish? But the grand finale is when he was on the cross, even to the very end, he had this Italian made suit that the Roman soldiers was gambling for. <laughs> because it was too expensive to tear up and rip. Now, all of us are now throughout their life. So, where did I get the idea that Jesus, the son of a king, was poor? I got it from religion. Just like I got everything else that's short in my life. Religion told me that. 
I did not get that from the Word of God. So if it's not from the Word of God, don't do it. Your traditions and your religions that Jesus tells you makes the Word of God of no effect. How God going to tell you, I came that you might have life and a more abundant life with your broke, busted, disgusted self. <laughs> I had to put it that way to get the, just wake you up from the religion. That doesn't make no sense to it. He's a king. He'll tell you, hey, you're a king's kid. Okay. <laughs> you know, what kind of king you got? And his God's brag telling you, I own everything. I have given you everything that pertains to life and God, and I own everything. And he tells you, I have given it over to you. He says, the earth is Lord for the but I have given it over to man. Now Jesus said, I'm telling you, now go back and take it, receive, retake it. He says, the kingdom of God has suffered violence. When did it suffer violence? The first violence it took when Adam ate the apple or quince or whatever and disobeyed God. The kingdom of God suffered violence. That's when Satan like, aha, gotcha. Snatched all the stuff from the kingdom of earth and, and he took it. It suffered violence. Then Jesus comes back and says, it says the kingdom of God has suffered violence, but now that I hear, the violent take it by force. What's that word take we say it is? What? Re you receive it by force. You receive God's grace because God has already given it back. Jesus Christ went down and snatched the keys from the, uh, um, the hell, death, hell, and the grave, and he's given these. He says, now you're going to go and receive it, you're gonna, but you're going to take it by force. But the force you're going to use is called the force of faith. Faith has its own force. The violent take it by force. But the force is the force of faith. We have what you call a strategic military mind when it comes to doing on our assignment of things of God. But we are yet not the military people. The angels are. You are God's administratively, but you think militarily strategic wise. You only do what the administration people like. Go forth and go down there and make sure that's done. And then everything in heaven goes and obey you. It shall obey you. You shall decree a thing and it, whatever you said what it was, it shall obey. This is you. Watch this. This is a bad, bad you. Watch this. Once you train your spirit, man. Your heart. You did it once before when you accepted Jesus Christ. If I confess with my mouth and believe with my heart. And since then, when I got born again, they should have told me, you know what you just did? Something supernatural just occurred to you. And every day from this day forward, you're going to have to do this again in every area of your life. Mm -hmm. Now I ask them to get saved. <laughs> You're becoming a savior to people. You're going to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart when you say it. You're going to confess with your mouth and believe with your heart when you say it. You're going to confess with your mouth and believe with your heart when you say it. When you want anything done, let there be AC. Let there be new tires. Let there be house. Let there be healing. You're going to lay hands on the sick and you're going to confess, be healed in Jesus' name. It's going to confess with your mouth, but you believe it with your spirit man. Your spirit man is not trained yet because... We've been saying stuff. The world tricked us. They told you to start mixing up words. They told you that bad was good. Your spirit don't know that. It only speaks truth. Bad is not good to the spirit. Good is good to the spirit. That's why God says everything you say. So you got to watch it. The intense. This is why it's called. Um, he's like, well, different languages change like that. It's called the law of first mention. And it's called also the spirit. Who knows a man saving the, 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 the spirit? It knows the intentions of your heart. <laughs> See, this is a supernatural thing that happens. So it knows when you say it from your heart with the right intention, if it's going to produce. Versus you just, your old self just... Blah, 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 saying scriptures. Amen, brother. The kingdom of God is within you. You know, no depth, no meditation, no thought to it. 
Now, watch this. Here's the biggest one. Zero expectation of what you just said. That's the biggest one right there. That's why you must become like a child who always has what? Lots of them. Lots of expectations. They expect you, Mom. I wonder they expect things that you didn't even say to them. <laughs> you know where you get that from? They just because their creativity is off the chart. And what are you doing? I just think that blah 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 blah, and they're saying stuff, and they got expectations of it. You know, and you can't tell them nothing. And God says you need to come back like a child. You'll be more creative. Look. You're going to start watch this. The, and here's the main thing Jesus is going to get excited about. When he gets somebody with your adult self become like a child, you start using your creativity, you start believing for the impossible. Mm -hmm. You start believing for the impossible. That's the only thing God wants to get involved in. He don't want to do the possible. Because as soon as you come up and say, God did this for me and it's the possible, people are like, yeah, God does it for everybody. Right. <laughs> yeah. ain't, ain't no glory in that. God wants the impossible. He wants to show his glory. He yes. wants to flex and show them. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to know that I'm alive. Yes. You know, so God wants you to start believing for the impossible, but you have to want to do it. God said he gave you desires of the heart. The desires that he already put, has for you. His desire is way above you. You thinking too lowly. Mm -hmm. You thinking too, just like it says, you feed them. You see how Jesus used to do those guys? We got over 10,000 people out here. We got five loaves, two fishes. He says, you want to send them people away? And he looked right at them and stuff. No, 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 you feed them. See? Impossible. Storm in the boat. Impossible. We have been talking about this word, blessing, blessings. This word, blessing. This word, blessing, is the one that we said we learned in Genesis that God has already done for us, right? He, we say that blessings is, let's get into it real quick. Because I, I, man, God didn't give y'all something. I don't know why God wanted y'all to hear this tonight. <laughs> because you need to know who you are first. Because I'm going to start telling you some stuff that we can do. We have access to uh, how powerful we are like that. But I must show you where it all begins. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God says, no. He's, he's getting back at Satan. Because we know there's a, there's something happened before to destroy the earth. Because God don't make anything that's dark, out of order, and disformity. So something happened. So He says, "I'm gonna renew it, just like you're gonna do in the end times again. I'll show you the end from the beginning. I'm gonna make a new heaven and I'm gonna make a new earth. He did it right in the spot. Move the firmaments, divide the waters from the waters. He did it in the beginning. He said, "I'm the God, like no, I'm gonna show you the end from the beginning." And then you go to Revelations when He creates a whole new heaven and new earth. With man on the planet living in his presence again. Same stuff's going to happen again. In between is what we're doing right now. We're in the end of the end times. All right. So God will say, but in the end times is when he, did, when he shows out the most. When the children of Israel was leaving at the end of the end, that's when he what? Showed out the most. <laughs> When God got ready to yank them out of Egypt, just like he got ready to get ready to yank us out here in rapture, he's going to show out the most <laughs> before that happened. All the Egyptians and some of the people, all of them did not, all the ones who came to the water died. It had some more Egyptians on the other side who didn't follow. The families, the kids, the left behind. Guess what kind of story they're telling? Not like we're going to do with AI here when we're in the air, but we think some space ages, <laughs> ships came and we got them and took them out. No, 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 no. Uh, those people's God delivered them out of the hands of us. <laughs> That's what they're saying. And they took care of all their enemies. And they, look, sweatless victory because they were slaves. They had no weapons and farmers that could not fight. Because it's the Lord's battle. <laughs> it's the Lord's battle. And that's where God gets the glory. All they did was enter into his rest. For God can get the glory. The more you realize where you, none of that fake stuff, where you go put your hand in the flesh, do something, cause something to happen, and just say, Praise the Lord. Look what the Lord has done. You will never see God. In it, 
God don't need you. He says, I share my glory with no one. No one. And anybody who started doing that, he set you to the side so quickly. When people start telling you, oh, you all at the back, you're not, no, 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 no. No, he will set you aside. He shares his glory with no one. Now, he wants you to brag about him. He didn't have the praises. Praise him. It's God. He didn't have the praises of his people. Man, praise God. Look what God did. He just yanked that person out of the, dog, out of the handicap. He just fixed that person's head. And he said, too much is called to praise. Give God some praise up in here. Nah, I did it. He used me to do it. I want a hose. I'm not the water. I'm the water hose. It's the water that did it. The rivers of living water that did that. And you need to let, give God the glory. God don't, God, don't, God don't do that. I'm telling you. He just said, I will not share. He said, no flesh will be glorified before me. Now what happens? There's a lot of flesh in the pulpits now that's being glorified, glorified before more flesh. But the presence of God's not there. He just told you his rule. Well, I just read it. There will be no glorifying the flesh in my presence. In other words, he's going to walk up. Let's go, Holy Spirit. Let's go. Now, you can have all the flesh train around you want. Because you're still gifted. Because God gives gifts without repentance, meaning he's not going to take it back. You're going to be gifted. But the presence of God is not there because you are operating in your flesh. And God won't let you glorify your flesh. In his presence. Now you can glorify your flesh all you want. But he says, well, he's a who I ain't been around for. You know when people tell you, you like, uh, you can do what you want, but I ain't gonna be there. Well, that's God. Where do you think they got that from? <laughs> you can do what you want, but I ain't, I ain't around. That's temporary. <laughs> you know, you know, but as soon as you humble yourself, that's why he's telling the church right now as a whole. If my people call by my name, well, turn from their wicked ways, humble themselves. Repent, turn from their wicked ways. That's what he's going to do. I'm going to show up and show out. And then the whole world is going to know, don't fool my churches. Don't fool with my churches. My people you're messing with. See? Now, since I told you, if you can't do that as a group, you can do it as an individual. And that's my greatest hope. And I'm trying to teach you how to do that. If groups don't want to do it, that's fine. As an individual, you can do everything that he said. He said, blessed is the nation who Lord is God. Blessed is the city who Lord is God. And he says, blessed is the individual who Lord is God. So as an individual, get it on, get it on. Because I'm telling you, you can't get too many people because once they realize, you mean I can't go around glorying in my flesh? You mean I got to give up my life and sacrifice, do a living sacrifice? I was telling my wife the other day, I said, baby, do you remember I did the thing on the temple? And, and um, gee, I call it Jesus in the Old Testament, and I show you the, the temple, the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. And I show you the protocol of what they had to do, the first doors, each door. The first door, we realized that most people don't make it to the second door. Okay. The first door is all about sacrifice. That's going to be the, you know, the, the loudest place. <laughs> that's the loudest place. Sacrifice, that's the out of court. And here's the problem, because in order to go to the next door, there's this basin. It's a mirror. It's a clear basin that's full of water. And God tells you the, the, uh, the, the Levite had to go and cleanse himself. You remember they told Jesus... Something wrong. He thought they had um, these guys was nasty because he said, "You, what's wrong with your disciples? They don't wash their hands before they eat." Yeah. That was a ceremonial cleansing. Like washing the word. Yeah. You had to bring your hands in certain different ways. You know, I'm, I'm not into all that. This is Jewish custom the way they ceremony wash their hands and stuff like that. But that's what he's talking about. They do a ceremony cleansing to make this up. The I did this for the Lord, so I know. I'm, hopefully, I can make it into heaven one day. I did. That's the way they are. I, I read my scriptures, so I hopefully I can make. That's the way they are. No relationship whatsoever. And and if you was to ask them, do you know you're gonna make it? They'll say paradise. When you make it into paradise, which is their head, they'll say, I hope so. Not this blessed assurance that we got. Jesus, man. Oh, what a foretaste. The foretaste is He filled you with the Spirit. That's the foretaste. 
you know, blessed divine, you know, something supernatural happened to me. You know, I am not the same person. Things I used to do, I don't do no more. You know what I'm saying? That was, so that was a foretaste. Like, wait a minute. <laughs> you know? And then for some reason, he almost gave you like, you, you can remember the things you did, but it's like a distant amnesia. Only God can do something like that. You know, oh, death weighs your sting. Oh, sin weighs your sting. The same thing is like, you bring it up, I'm like, yeah, I used to do that. Don't bother me no more. At all. Only a supernatural God can pray. God, hallelujah. God can do something like that for you. This is what people need to taste. All these people who are depressed, all they get saved, really saved. Really and watch God. <laughs> and watch God do a work in you. You all depressed. You crazy. Get born again. And watch God work that stuff out. You know, get rid of that stuff. Like, well, I don't feel. It. No. But I still remember I did it. Yeah. How's that feel? I just remember I did it, but I don't, I don't feel that. Exactly. God takes away the shame and the pain. <laughs> That's a complete work in you. God, God's doing it, amen? amen? Where was I? I got off track. <laughs> I was talking about blessings. the blessings, yeah. I was talking about the blessings of God, of course. But I was, I was talking about the story about how, how Jesus, but I'm going to move on because I lost my spot. And I, but I do want to show you again about the blessing. Remember last week we talked about the blessing, right? Amen? amen. And last week we talked about this. Go ahead and reread real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19 says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life so that you and your descendants may live. Now, when you read the word of God, excellent. In Deuteronomy, he's talking to a group of people, but that word transcends also to us. This is a setup. God will show you how he set, he set the whole thing up. He says, in the earth... This is why God says God's not marked whatever man so he he reaped. That's good and bad, right? Because when he sets something up, he set up his laws in the thing. Like, for instance, gravity has its own law. Guess what? Evil man, righteous man, crazy man can't touch that. Gravity is still measured the same way. Mm -hmm. It still operates what? From the day Adam was in the garden to right now. Well, that's the way God has some spiritual laws set up. This is why him and Jesus can chill and sit down. I used to think, because he used to teach me, man, God's going to bless you, so he's going to stand up. Hey, you see, Hugh, Hugh just did a good thing. Bling, go ahead and bless him for that. <laughs> I used to think that's the way God operates. It's silly. You know, like, no. He says, I already bless you. And he's going to tell you how he did it. Watch this. I, he said, I come from heaven and earth. The things he created as a witness, right? Because you ain't born yet against you today that I have set before you. So this came before I was born, before you was born, before you was born. He said, I set this stuff a long time ago. All right. Before you, that life and death is set up. Blessings and curses is set up. All right. Therefore, choose life so that you and your descendants may live. He's telling you now choose the life. I said before you dealt with some things you can do is going to create life, and some things you can create is going to create death. He said, I'm telling you, choose life. He's like a test taker. He's like, that's going to be on the test. Choose life. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> Question has to write there. Genesis 1 26. Read, please. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. God has said every creeping thing, so you can you got dominion over creeps. You got some creeps at your house? You got some creeps around your house? You got dominion over them. Amen. Praise God. Now God said, let us, him in. He says, him in. Who is he talking to? Uh, we know at least three. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. I don't know if the heavenly host was sitting there listening when he said it. You know? But we know, he said, let us make an image. So we made the image. What's the image of God? What's the image of God? What, what is God? God is a, that's the image of God. God is a spirit. He's not a man. God is not a man that he should lie or the son of man. All right? See, God, God, God is not a man. He is a spirit. All right? So the first thing he did, let us make man's image. So he made a spirit. So you are a spirit man. This is why I always wear this in the church. The first thing I am is first. See, this is priority. It's called the law 
of first mention. Remember this law. The law of first mention. Here's how the world is, even in the world. When bad was first used in the English language, bad meant bad. That's called the law of first mention. Now, when they told you bad was good, even though you're calling it good, it's bad. That's how they messed up your spirit. Calling things out there. They did it on they did it because they knew Satan is the ruler of the world system. And he knows the power that you have. Made in image God, if you start speaking good stuff with your spirit all the time, it will produce good things. Now he's making you call things bad. Man, that's a bad car. You made a good car bad. Even though you think it intentionally, no, I mean that means good. You know how people are saying that stuff? I know that means that, but to, to me. <laughs> <laughs> It don't work that way in the spirit realm. It don't have no, but to me, it means that. It is what it is. Yes. <laughs> you know, that's why God says, thy word is nothing but truth. That's why he tells you, meditate on these things. Think on these things. Whatsoever is, what's the first one? True. If it ain't true, I don't even have to go down the list. Throw it out. Throw it out, because you don't want that thing in your spirit. Because the spirit is your heart. The things that's in your heart. He says, from out of the heart flows what? The issues. God says, everything you have in your life came out of your heart. Really, good or bad. This is why God says, every tree that I didn't plant, I'm going to have to uproot. So he has made dominion. This word dominion for us, this is a new word. Dominion, we understand that. Take kingdom, kingdom reign. You know this kind of power, you let them have dominion. This is a power. This power is a royal power because he's a king and you're a king's king. And he's king of kings and lord of lords. You are the kings that he's kings of, over. So you're king of kings, right? So this demand is called royal power. Where did God get this power to give us power? Well, he's a king. A king can give anybody he wants. It's his stuff. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And you cannot, once you king, you automatic lord. That's why it says the earth is the Lord's. Lord's mean what? Owner. A king cannot be an owner of nothing. He's not a king. That's why God wants you to be the owner of something. All right? God don't want you being <laughs> broke, busted, disgusted. You got to be Lord, Lord of the Lord. He wants you to own something. All right? And watch this. He has given it on to men, so he lets you own. So y'all over the earth. Over the fish to see, we know everything except man. You're not supposed to try to rule man that's witchcraft. But everything else. Now, I ain't even go through all this whole list because you see Jesus show up in the New Testament. The first thing he started messing with is what? Uh, can I borrow your boat? Oh, yeah, sure, sure, Jesus. Get on the boat, preach the message, and turn around and say, okay. Hey, guys, go ahead and launch back out into the deep. And Peter says, we've been trawling all night. We've been trying to fish all night. <laughs> and, and, and they did it at night. Why? For the fish can't see the net. For they won't go under it. They also did in shallow water. Why? For the fish had a better chance of not ducking underneath the net. What did Jesus say? Time for the impossible. Launch out into the... God wants you to do the same thing. Yeah. Your life is not based on your bank account. Your life is not based on your situation. Your life is based on how much revelation you got in your heart of God. Mm. It is time for you to launch out into the... This is why I want you to train your spirit. We're going to work on our spirit all year this year. All we're going to be training that spirit. Yes. You're going to decree a thing and it shall obey. So going to train that spirit. Absolutely. All right, then, then he says, he says you, you, you'll be all over the earth. Now he's going to come back because he's he going to say, I'm going to show you what you guys are supposed to be doing. All this time we had all these kings and stuff. And here's Jesus show up in the New Testament. And all this time he working with people. Working with a couple of people, they got it. He put a spirit on a couple of people, they got it. You know, and they still didn't have a full revelation. Jesus is going to, now I'm going to show you. He came down here not to die that one day you go to heaven. He came down here to demonstrate who you were. Mm -hmm. This is God's original idea. You are me. You and me are one. The same things I do, you can do too. Because this was God's original plan. 
and I bring it back. Let's get back to Eden and sit on top of the world. The world means systems. All those systems that we operate, business, you know, religion, all of them, you're supposed to dominate those. Now watch this. Here is the next thing over the earth. He says, peace be still to a storm. Most people, religious people tell me that God had called the storm and they see this stuff happening and see all these floods in California. I guarantee you some religious people are trying to attribute it to God. Mm -hmm. that's, that's just how they are. I have never seen, and I grew up with that craziness to where everything that I read in the Bible, I say, that you have no word. The word says Satan comes what? To kill. Still. What does the storms doing in California right there? Killing. Stealing. Destroying. And who's going to do it again? Satan comes to do that, right? And here's what this people. That's God trying to treat some people some lesson. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See? You will find yourself putting that in your spirit. So when I'm sitting here telling you what the words say about all the things you can do, trust me, I used to be the same thing. When Jesus used to say to start reading the scripture, I'm like, man, that must have been for a different time, man. That must be for somebody else, man. Because my spirit was shot. From listening to religious people say stuff like, Jesus is going to hurt you. He's going to get you. Better watch. He's going to get you. He's going to cause storms to get, get people to get in line. He'll give you sickness and disease to chastise you. Mm -hmm. That stuff is in my spirit. That's why God says, every tree that I did not put down there must be uprooted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We got to uproot that mess. We can't get our spirit man to operate. Here's God telling you, you can speak to a storm and a tornado and put a stern wheel and tell it get out the way. But you don't have it. Your spirit's not training. Because mm -hmm. you got too much junk in it. It's time to get it out. Listen to crazy people. No more. I said, what the word say? That's why I gave you three songs that said, what? Speak the word only. 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 It sounds simple, but it's going to be very hard because Everybody's not speaking the word at all. They're speaking a little word, a little my opinion, and a little religion. And it's going to measure, and your spirit has to be on one accord. And when they were all on one accord, they only spoke the word only. Amen. Mm -hmm. Pastor, pastor about this, man. Because think about it. I just realized that we are like superheroes on this earth. Then we'll have to put up all this stuff we've been putting up with. And we letting ourselves stop us from being lazy on one side of the word. Uh, religious people, they're going to get out your way just like Jesus did. He ignored the religious people. He said, shake the dust and keep on walking. Mm -hmm. If they don't receive you, keep moving. You go to the word. Like, I understand what you're saying, brother, but the, but the words say, but the words say, you can be, just how you become like a kid. Because mama said, and daddy said, because daddy said, because daddy said, because daddy said, you're going to become like a child. See? Oh, you, oh, I don't hear, man, because you're going to talk about your daddy. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. The creator of the universe, the creator of you and me, <laughs> the one that holds everything in his hand. Yeah, I'm going I'm to talk about him. You know, I ain't going to talk about no religion. Well, what I think and what I feel, who cares? What did he say? What did he say? You know, remember, we're supposed to speak the word only. That's the law of confession. You agree with God. You speak with God. You don't argue with God. I don't know how it all works. All I know, I'm supposed to come here and say and this and this only. Obedience is better than what? Sacrifice. But if you're all in love with this world, that's why I tell you, love not the world, nor the things in it. And see, if you're in love with anything, they'll keep you from saying this because I said that, man, they're going to think I'm crazy. I said that, they're going to think I'm going to be funny. I said that, I might get rejected. How is that working for you anyway? <laughs> Trying to be in naked graces. You're still going to be broke, busted, disgusted. When you get in a crisis, you're going to know what to do. But you're in naked graces, and it's going to hold your hand and praise the Lord anyway. When you could be an overcomer like God says you are, you're an overcomer. And it's going to be, God said, endure hardness like a soldier. I went overseas. Everybody you know, that's in a uniform, they're like, oh, pray for us. It's American soldiers. Some of them like us. <laughs> they showed them. They're like, what y'all doing over here? Now, old people always like it because they knew why we were there, because we have saved the country. <laughs> the young idiot kids don't know why we're there. They think we're just over there messing up their stuff. <laughs> oh, praise God. <laughs> 
another teacher. <laughs> That's how that happens. Say, man, I'm still smiling. It's Valentine's Day. It's all love, love, love. <laughs> the blessing, watch this. The blessing, praise God, the power that God used to create the world. So when God says, let there be light, that was the blessing. Ooh, praise God. That, that's what the blessing was. It's the same power that helped God create the earth. So he says, A.K. is dominion. Let them have dominion or let them be blessed or let them be having blessing. So in religious term, they're like, oh, God's going to bless you. Uh, uh, bless you, brother. We just use the word. There we go again. Religiously, this is why I wanted to cover it. Because it's, it's such a powerful word that's supposed to be active in your life. But if you are not using it right and killing off your spiritual heart with it, it won't activate because the way you're using it, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's an empowerment, it's a endowment. It's what's this? It's uh, dominion means supreme rule, still the blessing, sovereignty, and authority. You are gonna say something and it's gonna it's gonna obey you. Why? Because you have authority upon this earth over the blur of the creeps, birds of the air, everything on the earth. You have authority over it, right? The power to direct. And dispose of at your own pleasure, meaning when you need it, you pull it out. As they say, what's in your wallet? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> the blessings in there, all right? <laughs> you gonna pull it out when you need it at your own pleasure, all right? So you're totals of the blessing now. All right? And we see that the transfer, watch it, the transfer of power to mankind, the blessing. Read what where God transferred this power, this blessing. In Genesis 1.28. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. And God blessed them. Stop. Say that again. And what? And God blessed them. When God blessed them, he just empowered them. All right? And you had to read the rest of it. And then they, then they then say, without that blessing, you can't have authority over all this stuff. See, without the blessing, you can't control nothing. You can't control your circumstance and situations. We talked about last week. I can talk about it tonight, but I'm going to mention it. You remember last week we talked about um, Job when, when, uh, when even Satan started listing all the, 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 the attributes of since Job was blessed. The attribute says he has a head of protection all around. He has this right here. You know, Psalms 91, like when people like call, he says, like, remember, that I showed you, like, well, what happened, Job? How did he lose it? If he had the blessing on it, how did he use it? And he said, he tore it down. He says, show me where I have error and over my mouth. My mouth has torn down my own hedge of protection. Your mouth is tearing down your own blessing. Your mouth is making you weaker in power. Your mouth is the one that's doing it. Ooh, I'm going to try to close tonight because I want to show you the power of what your mouth doing. It started in the beginning with your mouth. Because this is how you're going to do it. You're administrative. You're not soldiers. You're not, we don't wrestle against what? Flesh and blood. But principalities. So you have to speak. And God says the words that I speak to you are what? Spirit. Meaning the words that you speak, if you speak his words, they are spirit which go into the spirit realm. And they do damage to Satan. This is why Satan wants you to say bad is good. Because he, he going to mess up your spirit like woo. I'm going to let them shoot the trigger with their prayer, with their confession, but there ain't no ammo in it. Ain't no ammo in it. Why? Because you have like, you just like Job, show me where I have error with my mouth. And you have torn down the hedge of protection of your blessing. And we've been doing it ignorantly. Ignorantly. I know you might see my people praying from what? A lack of knowledge. Did he tell you nothing? But how could they ever hear? Because now he's telling, he's talking to the preachers back then, the Levitical priests. He says, you know what? My people are down there perishing from a lack of knowledge because you guys don't preach the word no more. You reject my knowledge. Same a thing that happened today. That's why we're trying to have a revival of the word of God. You can go to church all day long and get barely no word. Because you have rejected, and this is why people said stage four cancer falling off, kids are uh, uh, going crazy, want to commit suicide, people are broke, busted, and disgusted, marriage being dissolved inside the church. Why? Because you have rejected my knowledge. I ain't gonna talk about 
uh, stand pure before the Lord. Husband, love your wife. Wives, respect your husband. I don't want to say that the people might not come to my building. <laughs> and guess what God said? That's what God means by it. it says, when he says you reject with me, oh, you know, you know this. You reject, he said, he's talking to the preachers of the day, the biblical preachers say, and you reject knowledge. And then he says, watch this, well, a lot of stuff will happen. He says, you will no longer represent me. It got a lot of people put in the pulpit right now. They no longer represent God, they represent themselves. Flesh has been exalted. This is why nothing's happening. This is why when the COVID comes down, they shut their doors tight and they're scared just like everybody else. No power, no power, no word. No word. No, got away from the word. We have religious calisthenics going on. Hype. Inspirational preaching. Smoke. Mirrors. But no word. That's God says that's supposed to be anointing upon his word to destroy yokes. To equip the people to do the work of ministry in their lives. For they ain't going around here stressed out. Going on order. You're not supposed to be stressed. When you come to church, it's like a hospital. It's really like a hospital. It's a hospital for your spirit, your soul, and your body. All three. Completely whole. That you might be made whole. The shalom of God. The shalom of God. When you go to church, that's what's supposed to happen. But if you don't stick to the word of God's order, it doesn't happen. Man, I remember God sent me down. Man, I was just going, oh, God, you know, look at this place. Man, people, are, things are falling apart. Sit down, sit down. I was acting like God was doing like this. I got everything to eat like, Wait, wait. Sing a song. Sin revival. Sin revival. Like, he's like, I ain't sending it. I ain't sending it. Look what kind of, what kind of God I made. I'm like, what? You think God don't want you to be revived? <laughs> I ain't sending it. I said, I say, it's obvious you guys don't have a relationship with God the Father. You just talk about God, 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 God. And then, and then, and then you, he, that's one role. And then the next one, he's my daddy. Hold up. It's a whole different level now. You talk about a guy who got everything, he can do everything. Now you're talking about, and he happens to be <laughs> my dad. I'm in the house. I'm in the house. See? And they don't know him like that. So when that, that changed my life when I got a revelation of God the Father. And then I knew right then something's wrong. Hold up. My, my dad didn't want that to happen to people coming to church every day and not getting nothing. Yeah. Hey, hold up. Hey, that's why I'll go to church, Hugh, because man, all the people do that. Like, hold up. And I'm over there trying. No, 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 no. You know what I'm saying? That's not, that's not how my daddy is. That's not how my daddy is. Don't get it twisted. I'll show you a strong. God who has rules and love at the same time. He's a judge loving judge. Don't get me wrong. He's a twisted stuff like when people try to, you know, paint my father. God has no standards. He accepts anything. When you go to heaven, it's going to be sloppy. You'll be walking over stuff, messy, out of order. That's the first thing God deals with is order. In any situation. Because remember... It's like a well-oiled machine. If you get an order, kick it automatically start working anyway. Mm -hmm. So the first thing he's gonna do is order. So when I see things out of order, I'm like, oh, you're messing up. It'll never work. I'm just gonna tell him this. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna throw some more money and love at it and more. I'm gonna hold him a little tight. It's still. It's like your leg broken and you're holding me. I need to get it reset. I need to get it back in. Order. It's never going to work. But I'm going to tell them good things. I'm going to inspire them. I'm going to tell them good stuff. It's still out of order. All you got to do, watch this. Click. And it starts the healing process. Next thing, this brother can run. You see what I'm saying? That's the church. Broken. Out of order. It's a well on machine. When you read that word of God, you find out all the stuff he put in place. Oh, he's a good God. Oh, he's a good God, saints. I'm telling you, he's a good God. Let me show you this right real quick. I'm going to run out of time. Y'all got a new, you got another message tonight. God loves you. God loves you guys. The power of the blessing is gives protection. Because I'm going to show you give these three points how to train your spirit before we leave here tonight. I want to teach you how to train. Three things you got to at least do 
to start working on training your spirit. Remember Job, he talked about his head of protection. We are here to do the impossible. Don't forget that. Stop. You're thinking too low of God. God says, don't be telling me because he's going to tell you is anything that's in your power doing you, know, you do it. You feed the 10,000. You talk to the storm. You lay hands on the sick for them to recover. Now, when, it's, when it comes to something impossible, like, oh, call me up. Call me up. Oh, I like that kind of stuff. That stuff that's out of your reach. You don't have that type of authority in, in that area. But all these other areas, when you start calling on God, he's like, no, he's not going to do it. It's like, I have locked myself out of the area that I put you in. Mm -hmm. So either you got to do it, or you're going to have somebody do it for you that's down here that has the same authority you have. But when it comes to God, work of miracles, he's a miracle worker, the impossible, oh, you can call him up for that. But you got to have your spirit right and have, a, have the environment set for miracles. That's why I love that I miss about Benny Hinn. That dude created atmospheres for that to happen. People are like, oh. And then, you know, every head of religious, modern day Pharisees mad. Who did he think he is? He wasn't doing anything. Benny Hinn, all he did was bring the presence of God. He had an anointing to create a whole arena of the presence of God. Lift your hands, people. Sing songs. He's getting them. Sing hallelujah. Simple songs. Nothing deep. And just over and over again. Creating the atmosphere. And he's like, be quiet, be quiet. Sit down, sit down. Bring me the mic, bring me the mic. Next thing you know, people start getting up. Tell me your testimony. He ain't saying nothing. Lay hands on nobody. Create the atmosphere for it. When we were singing, I felt the warm thing go through my body. Hallelujah. Give God the praise. Create the atmosphere. He had, it takes them hours to create this because most people coming in like we did, full of religion, carnal, spectating, not releasing because they're too busy looking at people watching. See, this is the kind of stuff you have to practice on your own as an individual. You bring the praise. You bring the worship. You bring it. I just have a song with him waiting on you guys. You've been sitting around with God all week, all week meditating on word, thinking about how good God is. Some of the words in God said that, man, we made his image. We can do this. Thing. You have this stuff for you, man. I put on anything. Your spirit going to leave. No matter what I put on. Your spirit going to leave. Because you create an atmosphere within yourself. And it connected. Amen. Corporate worship. Create the atmosphere. And whatever, because you know when you come here, I don't know what you guys are going through. When you come in here, whatever you need can happen in praise and worship. Yes. I got my answer. Yes. I got it. You can get it on your own. Just bring it up in here. We just create the atmosphere for it. Amen? Oh, come on. You got to understand how the blessing works. Watch this. God blessed them in Genesis. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to, here's the three C's you need to do. God is a blesser. That's why he blessed them. And God does the impossible. That's the two things you know. God will always bless you. And God does the impossible. That's the things you get to for God. That's God's side. Who's going to bless? Them? God's going to bless them. And God's going to do the impossible. Now, here's the three C's we need to do for we can close tonight. I want you to work on for you can train your spirit. It's time to get our heart right, our spiritual heart right. For when we say stuff, when God says you won't be laughing at the scripture, you share the creator thing and it's coming past and you be like me and like, eh, is he for real? And, you know, this is why people think healing is gone for the day and all this kind of stuff. Because nobody doing this. They don't know what to do. They've been playing religion for so long, they didn't forget it. It's like Nehemiah and when they were building the temple back, they found the Bible. And the king started weeping. They said, I found the word of God. And he started reading, watch this, this is what this is our day, same stuff. We need to rebuild the temple. He started reading and realized how far away from the will of God they were. He was crying, just weeping. They found the law, the word inside the temple. They went to rebuild the church. They found the word. What were you doing before without the word? Whatever I want. You know, that's what's going on right now. Uh, here we go. Confess the three C's, commit and create. Let's take a look at them. When it comes to confessing, don't confess or so for anything you don't want or is not true in your life. When you confess, 
do not don't confess or so for anything you don't want that already is not true in your life. Now you have to work on that because out of habit, our flesh, Debo, has a way of making you say stuff. Now, normally, nobody's more of a jokester than your pastor. Yeah. All right, he likes joking. <laughs> I like jokes. So when I am corrected either by another person or the Holy Spirit, I don't make excuses. I make adjustments. You hear what I'm saying? Because what you happen is, I was just playing. Did your lip flop up and down? And did your tongue move and something come out your mouth? Did it line up with the word? No, no excuses. Make an adjustment. Period. Because that's going to happen. That's how it starts. Jokingly. You know, I got jokes. I do have some. <laughs> Praise God. You need to commit to live only by what you say. I'm telling you, one of the biggest things you'll struggle with. Time. What time you say you'll be there? Be there. That's also developing your spirit. Be there. I'm going to be there at such a sore time. Be there. Because you're, you said it. You spoke it. And now your, your actions have to line up with you spoke for your spirit to take it serious and record it. It says, record that. They said something. They did exactly what they said. Record that. Watch this. And when you do the opposite, <laughs> as God says, an evil report, something that don't line up with God, that's what we call an evil report. Anything that don't line up, you, that's why it says you come from your wicked ways or your evil ways. Anything that don't line up with God is called an evil way. Because remember, Jesus is the way, the truth. And he's also known as the word. So anything you don't do God's way is an evil way. See, you know, when you get start thinking like God, in this earth, he only, there's only, like he said, there's only what? Life, death. There's only blessing. See, when I was in church, they didn't teach me that. They told me that there's no such thing as that. You, always, you bless even when you curse. That's what they was telling me. So I never looked and fight it. I never volunteered by force and used the force of faith to get myself out of that curse because they were telling me while I was cursed, I was blessed. Ah, yeah, what the words say. <laughs> they would dare not admit that the life I'm living is a cursed life. That's what it is. When you're broken, busted, and disgusted, it's cursed. That's not the blessing. You're supposed to be living in the blessing, right? Commit to live by only what you say. And the last one, as we close, you are created being made in the image of God. Create. Expect what you say to carry out supernaturally. That way you ain't going to be looking at your own effort, your own means, your own power, your own resources. But according to his riches in glory, God got, God's no short of supply. None. You imagine you got everything. Uh, you, you got everything you need to fulfill your assignment, to have plenty, not lack. When you understand kingdom, like y'all got the kingdom series, I had you buy the kingdom book, and you start reading What's the name? The one that's goes, uh, one of the books is um, it teaches you about the role of a king, and it starts teaching you about you. The, the king is only good as his citizens, right? So when people look at his citizens, they say how good the king is. So the king wants to be glorified by his citizens. This is why they show you in the Bible when Solomon was king. The first thing he started talking about. How the Queen of Sheba seen how his maids and servant maidens and even the stalls of the horses was made and laid with gold. And this is why it says, that's, you know how you have all these courts? Before you, even before you get to him, he wants to show you all his goodness. <laughs> you haven't even met the king yet. But he says, like he told my man, but I'll pass by me all my goodness. <laughs> You pass through all my goodness. So, but you, you, you're really excited to see the king now. You, you, walk, you can't walk two feet. You look at the floor. You're looking at the, at the glory. The glory of God. Because it represents him. And God wants you. It says, watch this. In the scriptures, here's another one. It is my good pleasure to give you the kingdom of God. Meaning the whole access of heaven. Whatever I got up here is yours. And whatever you unlock, I unlock. 
And whether you lock up, I lock up. It's my good pleasure to give you this. So we have learned something tonight. The most important thing you learned tonight, that you're made in the image of God, that you're a powerful being. Satan is afraid of you. That's why he only distracts you. That's why he wants you to get in the word to find out who you are and what you can do. Stay away from religious people. If they don't believe the word, stay away from them. They're worse than Satan. You know, because you can recognize Satan. They don't let nobody twist the word. They rightly divide the word of truth. People telling you, when they tell you that that power that they used to have in the first century church has all passed away. They just indicated what kind of father you have. Because the same Satan is down here. That, that's the first thing. So you got, what? Satan's still here, ain't he? Yeah, brother, don't worry about it. Suffer now. <laughs> don't get me started. Praise God. <laughs> don't get me. God is good. Father, we thank you for the word. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, that the blessing is on us. We thank you, Lord, that you made us in your image. We thank you, Lord, that you gave us dominion over the whole earth. We are stewardship over this word, Lord, that you've given us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we have dominion power, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that the blessing is an empowerment. The car, the house is not the blessing. It's an effect of the blessing that you have put on us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we can speak to a thing and it shall come to pass. As Jesus told, him, told his disciples, Lord, is you can speak, you speak to this tree if you believe in your heart. That it will obey you. Lord, with every circumstance people going on right now, sickness, disease, heart, heart failure, social issues. Lord, I pray right now they learn to speak the word for that situation, Lord, that they might be healed. Or as we say this word, I must say saved or salvaged or renewed, Lord, by the power, Lord, that you have given us. Father, we thank you so much. We can't thank you enough for what you have done. For us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Give God a hand clap. Go to FR Ministries. Get, uh, I support FR Love you. We will see you next week. Praise God. Praise God.